A short summary of the Wim Hof Method, summarized and read to you by the Inner Revolution, saving you time on your journey to wisdom. Subscribe to our channel for more free audiobook summaries now. Would you climb Mount Everest in shorts? You might assume that attempting such a feat would kill anybody, but it didn't kill Wim Hof, also known as the Iceman. A renowned motivational speaker, Hoff has baffled scientists with his record-breaking ability to survive extremely low temperatures that would kill the average human. Short form note, Hoff didn't summit Mount Everest because he got frostbite on his foot, however, he did make it to 24,500 feet, 7,467 meters. Mount Everest is 29,000 feet, 8,849 meters, dot. Hoff developed this cold tolerance by following the Wim Hof method, a system based on cold exposure, conscious breathing, and mental dedication. This method doesn't just increase your cold tolerance, it's also designed to improve your health and comes with a host of other benefits, such as reduced pain and stress and greater mental energy. In the Wim Hof method, Hoff shares how he developed the method, why it works, and how to do it. In this guide, you'll learn about Hoff's life as well as about each component of his method and why practicing all three components together can help you reap maximum results and become the healthiest version of yourself. Along the way, you'll also discover how Hoff's techniques compare to scientists' recommendations and learn alternative practices to try. How Wim Hoff developed his method. In this section, we'll first discuss Hoff's life and how he developed and eventually dedicated his life to sharing the Wim Hof method. Hoff describes how his journey was practically prophesied from birth. Born in 1959 in the Netherlands, Hoff is an identical twin. His brother Andre came first, and since echo technology didn't yet exist, the hospital staff didn't believe his mother when she insisted that another baby was coming. By the time they realized their mistake, they had to heavily medicate his mother so that she could deliver Hoff safely. Under the influence of these drugs, Hoff's religious mother became convinced that her son would die and yelled out to Cod that she would make her son a missionary if he let her child live. Although Hoff never became a religious missionary, he did ultimately discover his own mission, sharing the Wim Hof method, which he started developing in his late teens. He narrates that after dropping out of school, he moved into a squatter's home at 17 and spent his days living as he chose. He soon became intrigued by an icy pond at nearby Beatrix Park and one day, he went into the water naked. Despite only staying in the water for a short time, Hoff felt invigorated. So he returned regularly and began experimenting with staying in the water longer and trying different breathing patterns to see how they affected his body. He did this every day, every winter, for 25 years, and learned about cold exposure and conscious breathing. Short form note, in a separate interview, Hoff elaborates further on exactly why he started experimenting with breathwork in the cold water. After dropping out of school at 17, Hoff spent some time in India before returning to the Netherlands. When he went into the water in Beatrix Park, he decided to experiment with different breathing patterns using yogic breathing exercises inspired by Indian culture. However, Hoff didn't discover the healing power of these techniques until several years later. In 1995, Hoff's first wife died by suicide after a long battle with her mental health. Hoff contends that he was able to survive and heal from this tragedy for two reasons. The reality that he needed to care for his four children and his daily excursions into cold water. In this way, Hoff discovered how powerful his daily ritual was, and he turned it into the Wim Hof method in hopes that he could help others heal themselves, too. How Hoff's experiences demonstrate the power of story and meaning. Hoff's description of how his traumatic birth experience and his first wife's death led him to discover his mission of developing and sharing the Wim Hof method demonstrates how humans can find both motivation and meaning in suffering. In Barking Up the Wrong Tree, Eric Barker explains that believing a good story about the random events in your life gives your brain a feeling of control and provides you with a sense of meaning that motivates you to surmount obstacles. Hoff's story that his mission to share his method was prophesied from birth may have motivated him to surmount obstacles and led to his success in popularizing it. Additionally, in Man's Search for Meaning, Viktor Frankl suggests that finding meaning in suffering EPS us deal with said suffering. 
Hoff may have found meaning in the suffering brought on by his wife's death because it triggered his discovery of the healing power of cold water. Understanding the Wim Hof Method You've now learned how Hoff developed the Wim Hof Method, but what exactly is it, and why should you do it? In this section, we'll review each component of the system, cold exposure, breath work, which Hoff calls conscious breathing, and attitude, which Hoff calls mindset. You'll learn how to practice each daily and what the method can do for your mind and body. Short form note, Hoff doesn't specify whether you should begin all three components of the method simultaneously or if you should introduce each individually. However, many underscore EQ21 e start by just taking cold showers before moving on to the full method. While this method has several benefits, Hoff warns that it's not for everyone, such as pregnant people, small children, or those with pre-existing medical conditions, especially neurological or vascular conditions. Short form note, for a full list of conditions that preclude you from trying the Wim Hof method, please check the book, and speak with your doctor before trying it. Understanding cold exposure. According to Hof, repeated cold exposure is the first component of the Wim Hof method. In this section, we'll first explain why to practice cold exposure and then how you should do it. Short form note, Hoff never explicitly defines what constitutes cold exposure. Rather, he discusses two main examples of cold exposure, cold showers and ice baths. Our summary focuses on cold showers because Hoff presents them, and not ice baths, as the cornerstone of the Wim Hof method. Why repeated cold exposure is good for you. Many people hate the cold, so why should you bother exposing yourself to it? Hoff contends that there are two main health benefits to cold exposure, reduced susceptibility to disease and a greater ability to handle stress. First, Hoff argues, argues that repeated cold exposure reduces your susceptibility to disease by improving the function of your circulatory, or vascular, system, the muscles and veins that deliver blood and nutrients throughout your body. Hoff explains that when you're cold, the smaller muscles of your circulatory system must work harder than usual in order to maintain your core body temperature. But due to the advent of climate control technology and clothing to keep you warm, you're rarely cold anymore, so these muscles don't work as efficiently as they should. This causes several issues. The muscles don't protect your core body temperature as well when it's cold outside, they don't deliver the nutrients your cells need as effectively, and they force your heart to pump harder to compensate for their failings, all of which can make you sick. By repeatedly exposing yourself to cold, you reactivate the smaller muscles in your circulatory system and thus sidestep all these issues. As these smaller muscles get stronger, they get better at protecting your core body temperature and more effectively deliver nutrition to your cells. And since they're taking on more work, your heart relaxes and pumps at a lower rate, and you become less susceptible to heart disease. What other experts say, how cold exposure affects your circulatory system. Researchers agree with Hoff that cold exposure can improve your circulation, which is essential for delivering nutrients throughout your body and is associated with better health. However, they don't suggest that this is because your blood vessels get stronger and allow your heart to pump at a lower rate as Hoff contends. Rather, some believe that your circulation improves because cold water immersion decreases your skin's temperature, so your body sends more blood to the skin to warm itself up once you're no longer in the water. Moreover, it's unclear whether a lower heart rate by itself makes you less susceptible to heart disease. While experts agree that having a high heart rate is associated with a greater risk of cardiovascular issues, a low heart rate tends to be associated with lower risks of heart issues because it's linked to greater physical fitness, not because it's independently a positive factor. Second, Hoff argues that repeated cold exposure improves your ability to handle stress in two main ways. First, as Hoff notes, the cold causes a physiological response that's identical to your response to emotional stresses, such as losing your job. Both types of stress raise your heart rate and trigger the production of stress hormones like cortisol. So by training yourself to handle the cold through repeated exposure, you train yourself to handle other kinds of stress, too. Short form note, researchers agree that experiencing small amounts of stress improves your ability to handle stresses in the future, but what if practicing being stressed doesn't sound appealing? 
Consider thinking of them as two types of stress, eustress and distress. One doctor explains that cold exposure is eustress, which is stress that positively affects you. Experiencing eustress teaches your body how to handle distress, which is stress that negatively affects you, like losing your job. Dot. The second way repeated cold exposure improves your stress response, as discussed previously, is by lowering your baseline heart rate. So although your heart rate still spikes when you experience stress, it doesn't spike as high as it would have if your baseline heart rate were higher to begin with, and thus is easier on your circulatory system. Short form note, experts warn that a decreased heart rate isn't always a good thing. For example, Hoff suggests that repeated cold exposure can lower your baseline heart rate to as low as 30 beats per minute, which experts contend is a sign your brain lacks oxygen. How to practice cold exposure safely. You've now learned why you should practice cold exposure, but don't hop into an ice bath just yet. Although Hoff gained fame by dunking himself in deathly cold water for prolonged periods, you shouldn't start there. Rather, to avoid shocking your body and making yourself miserable, Hoff recommends an incremental four-week program of taking cold showers. In the first week, Hoff suggests 30 seconds of cold exposure each day, at least five days per week after taking your regular warm shower, turn down the temperature so that the water feels cold, around 60 degrees Fahrenheit, and stand there. This temperature will cause some discomfort but should be tolerable. Thereafter, increase the time you spend in the cold water by 30 seconds each week. By the fourth week, you should be able to tolerate two minutes of cold water at the end of each shower. That said, Hoff emphasizes that you should listen to your body when undergoing this program. Don't push yourself past what you can handle. If you can't handle 30 seconds of cold water, you can start with 15 seconds, just as long as you eventually get to two minutes. Examining other ways to practice cold exposure. Do you have to hop into icy water to practice cold exposure effectively? Some researchers agree that gradually increasing the time you spend in cold showers is the fastest way to improve your cold tolerance, but the specifics of their recommendations differ. They suggest spending 15 seconds in the cold and increasing that time, time by 10 seconds each day, and they don't specify that you should be in cold water at the end of your shower. Moreover, these researchers aren't certain whether cold exposure improves your health and stress levels in the ways Hoff espouses. However, there are other ways to improve your cold tolerance and they may improve your health in ways that Hoff doesn't elaborate on. Some researchers suggest that spending two hours a day shivering in a 65 degree room will both improve your cold tolerance and reduce your body weight, partly because shivering uses up calories. Understanding breathwork. The second component of the Wim Hof method, according to Hof, is his breathing exercises, which we'll call breathwork. In this section, we'll explain why you should practice breathwork and how to do it. Why you should practice breathwork. We breathe all the time, so why bother learning how to practice Hof's specific brand of breathing? Hof argues that his breathwork has three main benefits. It increases your energy, it reduces disease, and it reduces inflammation. First, Hoff explains that breathwork increases your energy by altering your biochemistry. By controlling your breathing as Hoff suggests, you increase the amount of oxygen in your body, which in turn increases the number of energy molecules, called adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, in your cells. This leads to more energy. Short form note, in addition to breathwork, there are several other methods for increasing your ATP and consequently, your energy. For example, experts recommend consuming more fats and protein from meat and fish and increasing your water intake. Second, Hoff argues that breathwork can reduce disease. This is partly due to the increase in energy described above. By increasing your stores of energy, your body has extra energy to fight off diseases. Short form note, exercising may also increase your energy levels and boost your immune system. Researchers recommend working out for an hour each day. Third, Hoff explains that breathwork helps you regulate your immune response to reduce inflammation, which is thought to cause both disease and pain. Short form note, how does inflammation cause disease and pain? Researchers explain that when you're injured or ill, your body sends inflammatory cells to the affected organs to help you recover. 
For example, if you cut your hand, your body sends it white blood cells to heal the cut and attack infection. But sometimes, your body mistakenly believes that you're sick even when you're not and it sends white blood cells to attack nearby organs, causing disease and pain. Conventional science has long thought that your immune response is part of your autonomic nervous system, over which you have no conscious control, your body perceives a threat and sends out inflammatory markers to fight it. But a study in the 2010s proved the opposite. Hoff and 12 practitioners of his breathwork technique successfully suppressed their immune response after being injected with harmful bacteria. In this way, Hoff implies that breathwork may allow you to control your autonomic nervous system, thereby controlling your immune response and reducing the inflammation that causes disease. Short form note, Hoff's description of the study referenced above is slightly misleading. First, he writes that none of the practitioners of his method became sick, but the study authors specify that the practitioners experienced fewer flu-like symptoms, in other words, not zero. Second, Hoff implies that you can control your immune response in a way that might benefit chronic conditions caused by inflammation. But the study authors emphasize that they only looked at the immediate, short-term inflammation caused by a specific bacteria and that their results may not be applicable to chronic conditions. How to practice breathwork as Hoff notes, his breathwork exercises are relatively difficult and may cause fainting. Prior to performing the exercise, sit or lie down, and don't do the exercise anywhere near water, just in case you faint. Short form note, why might Hoff's breathing exercises make you faint? Experts suggest two possibilities. First, you may get lightheaded from too much oxygen as you repeatedly take in breaths. Second, you may not have enough oxygen when holding your breath, but since you also lack the carbon dioxide that triggers you to inhale, you won't feel the need to inhale more oxygen and may instead faint. When you're comfortable, take about 30 deep breaths. Once you start to feel tingly and lightheaded, take up to 10 more breaths, 40 breaths total. After breathing out the final time, hold your breath for as long as feels comfortable. The moment you feel you want more air, Inhale deeply and hold for 10 to 15 seconds before exhaling again. Repeat the process above, starting with the 30 deep breaths, up to three more times. With each repetition, you'll likely be able to comfortably hold your breath for a few seconds longer. Relax until you feel ready to face the rest of your day. Short form note, Hoff's breathwork is similar to Tummo breathing, a technique practiced by some Tibetan Buddhists that also involves repeatedly taking several deep breaths before holding your breath for a prolonged period. However, the Tummo technique differs from Hoff's in a few key ways. Notably, Tummo breathing involves a religious component, a fire visualization, and more specific instructions regarding the shape of your mouth as you breathe, none of which are present in Hoff's techniques. Tummo breathing also involves fewer deep breaths, Practitioners recommend inhaling only 5 times, not 30, before holding your breath. Understanding your mind. The third and final component of the Wim Hof method is your mindset, or attitude. In this section, we'll first explore why your attitude is critical to reaping the full benefits of the Wim Hof method. Then, we'll describe how you can embody the right attitude every day. Short form note. Hoff's description of the mindset component, which he also calls the power of the mind, encompasses both the attitude with which you approach the Wim Hof method and the will you develop by practicing the method in its entirety. Since these happen at separate times, we've presented them as two separate entities, your attitude, which we'll discuss in this section, and your will, which we'll discuss in the next section. Why your attitude matters. Hoff argues that your attitude is critical to the Wim Hof method because it ensures that the other two components, cold exposure and breathwork, work as effectively as possible. Why is this so? Hoff believes that we're able to consciously influence our autonomic nervous system not just via our breathwork but also via our minds. As evidence, Hoff points to a 2008 exper experiment that found that he was able to control his vagus nerve, a cranial nerve associated with unconscious processes like inflammation, more than previously thought possible. Short form note, other experts have also found that you can influence your vagus nerve via both breathwork and positive mantras but seemingly don't see this as evidence that we can consciously influence our autonomic nervous system. 
That said, it's impossible to compare their findings with the results of the 2008 experiment Hoff cites, as that experiment was never published. However, Hoff argues that this ability is dependent on your attitude, you must believe that it's possible to control your physiological responses. In other words, unless you truly believe that cold exposure and breathwork can benefit you in some way, you won't reap their full benefits. Short form note, research backs up Hoff's contention that your attitude is essential to the success of his methods. The authors of the study that found practitioners of Hoff's method could suppress their immune responses after being injected with bacteria published a follow-up study emphasizing that people who expected Hoff's methods to work were less likely to report flu-like symptoms. This doesn't mean you can't be at all skeptical of Hoff's methods. Rather, Hoff emphasizes the importance of trusting your body as you try these methods. In other words, focus fully on each technique as you do it, instead of listening to music or worrying about the time. As Hoff points out, he takes on major public stunts, like jumping into ice baths, because he's proven himself capable of doing so in his own practice. Similarly, the mere act of trying these methods suggests that you're at least open to the possibility that they work and by repeatedly trying them and experiencing their benefits, you'll become increasingly convinced of their power, too. How Hoff's methods compare to spiritual and practical texts Hoff's description of how to practice his methods despite potential skepticism is similar to how both spiritual and practical texts recommend approaching new skills. On the spiritual side, in The Secret, Rhonda Byrne also argues that trusting that a method will work helps make it work. She argues that your experience of the world is based on what your thoughts naturally attract, so JF you think something will happen, it will happen. On the practical side, the Confidence Code authors argue that if you master a skill, you'll develop confidence, a belief in your own ability to do that skill that's so strong, it drives you to actually perform the skill. Hoff's own confidence stems from his mastery of his method. Similarly, by focusing fully on each technique and trusting your body, you can master Hoff's method and develop confidence in your own ability to make it work as Hoff describes. How to cultivate the right attitude. Hoff recommends that you perform the following attitude practice each morning, ideally, at the end of your breath work. Short form note, Hoff doesn't specify why you should do it after your breath work. But other meditation experts also recommend meditating after breathwork because your mind is less stressed and more relaxed then. Starting in a relaxed state, think of a mantra or goal such as, I am relaxed and in contr control. As you do so, notice your physical reaction to this thought. Do you feel comfortable or tense? If it's the latter, breathe until you relax and are comfortable with your mantra. Once you truly believe your mantra, Breathe into that feeling and then go about your day. Short form note, how does Hoff's attitude practice help you become more open to the benefits of cold exposure and breath work? Experts suggest that when you meditate, you become more open to new experiences because you practice observing your thoughts without immediately reacting to them. Hoff's attitude practice may have a similar effect, since you breathe through any potential tension you feel regarding your mantra and wait for your body to adjust to the tension instead of trying to relieve it in some other way. Bringing the components together, the benefits of continual practice. You've now learned the benefits of each component of the Wim Hof method, but why do you need to practice all three together? According to Hof, continually practicing the Wim Hof method has two major benefits, you gain greater control over unconscious physical processes, and you unlock enlightenment. First, Hoff argues that by continually practicing his method, you can access your will, your power over unconscious physical processes. Hoff argues that by improving your understanding of your body, you improve your ability to impact it. By repeatedly exposing yourself to cold and practicing breath work, you fine tune your understanding of your physical body, notably, your interoception, your understanding of what's hap happening within your body, such as whether you're wired or tired. As a result, you improve your ability to manage the unconscious physical processes you can now sense, like your heartbeat. Other benefits of improving your interoception. There is a lack of research on whether improving your understanding of your body can help you control your unconscious physical processes, but research does suggest that improving your interoception has some of the benefits Hoff attributes to his method. Notably, experts suggest that it you have better interoception, 
You have better mental health because you're good at understanding how you feel and responding appropriately. So how can you improve your introception? Researchers have found that exercise can help by getting you accustomed to how your heart feels when it's physically stressed. From exercise, exercise improves your ability to determine if your heart rate has risen due to physical or emotional stress, which in turn improves your ability to respond appropriately to the stressor. Second, Hoff argues that continually practicing his method will eventually lead to enlightenment. Hoff failed to achieve greater spiritual understanding by reading ancient Indian scriptures. It was only when he stopped thinking and focused instead on merely feeling the cold and his breath that Hoff found what he calls the inner voice and innate understanding of what you truly need in any particular moment. Similarly, Hoff argues that by continually practicing his method and focusing on the feelings in your body instead of stimuli in the outside world, you can find your own inner voice, which will lead you to a higher truth. How Hoff's techniques compare to other paths to enlightenment. Although Hoff may be unique in connecting cold exposure to spiritual enlightenment, several traditions have connected breathwork and meditation to a higher sense of spirituality. Buddhists believe that meditating in several different ways can lead to enlightenment. Hoff's techniques appear most similar to the Buddhist meditation practice of shamatha, which involves paying attention to your body, as well as metta, which involves sending loving thoughts out into the world. In contrast, holotropic breathwork practitioners believe that breathwork can improve your sense of spirituality. Like Hoff, they believe that, through breathwork, you can access the innate understanding you have of what's most important. Unlike Hoff, after the breathwork, they process these insights externally either by drawing them or discussing them with another person.